Welcome back, ladies. Here we are again. It's been such a a great pleasure, hasn't it? It has been. It has. It has. We were just we were talking about how how long it had been, how many mm -hmm. times we've done this, and it just seems like it was yesterday. I know. It just it really does. And I, I remember parking that first day and walking <laughs> up to this church. I'm going. I feel like I'm going to my execution. <laughs> We were both really nervous. It was just, weren't we? I was so afraid, <laughs> but it's it, it's really worked out wonderful for us, and I am so thrilled. I am too. Um, it's truly a God thing. It is truly a God thing. Uh, today, the the title of this is "A Bend in the Road." Have you ever just been driving down the highway and let your mind drift off into some magical realm of reality? Where your thoughts go when you are alone and unencumbered? And have you thought, I really have it good right now. There's nothing worrisome in my thoughts. My mind is in a good place. My life seems to be about as good as it has ever been. And except for trying to decide what to cook for dinner, I'm not even focused on anything past this very moment. And since you've been driving along daydreaming, you fail, you fail to see that sharp curve up ahead and you come back to reality just in time to slam on your brakes, negotiate that turn and you don't even drift into the other lane of traffic. And here I am sitting here driving my car. <laughs> <laughs> After your heart slows back down to a reasonable rate, you take a moment to reflect on how dangerous it is to let your mind wander, especially when you are performing such a task as driving a car. My life has been smooth sailing for a while. We'd finally gotten to a place where we were getting to enjoy the fruits of our labor. And except for a few minor projects which could be finished if we weren't becoming so comfortable or borderline lazy, everything seemed to be coming up roses. Little did we know we were headed straight for a bend in our road. Mm. And just like you when you were driving down the road daydreaming, it comes up on you fast, real fast. And that overwhelming feeling, like slamming on the brakes and trying to negotiate a curve, comes at you like a freight train. But after you get through the curve and you're physically unscathed, the weight of that train is still sitting right there on your chest. Mm -hmm. It's almost as if someone said, so you think life is just hunky dory huh? I know. Well, let me show you. I know. <laughs> Am I the only one this has happened to? Oh, no. I seriously doubt it. As a matter of fact, after I had decided on the title of this commentary, I started searching for some material and I stumbled upon a very good book. And guess, you guessed it, the title is A Bend in the Road. It's by Dr. Je David Jeremiah. Ladies, if you have ever faced that bend in your road, you absolutely must read this book. Mm -hmm. I'm going to share with you some things that I learned by reading this book, but before I do, I want to read you this poem. It's by Helen Steiner Rice, and it's called The Bend in the Road. Sometimes we come to life's crossroads, and we view what we think is the end, but God has a much wider vision, and He knows that it's only a bend. The road will go on and get smoother, and after we stop for a rest, the pain that lies hidden beyond us is often the path that is best. I said that wrong. The path that lies hidden by, beyond us is often the path that is best. So rest and relax and grow stronger. Let go and let God share your load, and have faith in a brighter tomorrow. You've just come to a bend in the road. I'm sorry I messed that up, oh, but right. I hope the I hope it got they got the point. It got the point. Okay. Now I know that everyone's bend in the road is not the same. In my case, it was or is something that we know we'll get through. I have admitted to a couple of people that I'm surely not living like God has instructed us to. He says to cast all of our cares on Him. But you know as well as I, this is often harder to do than it should be. Mm -hmm. And for a get it done now kind of person, it is extremely hard. I know, I know, I've prayed. I pray daily for the faith to let it go, and I am. You can only do one thing at a time, and that time is God's time. However, in the case of Dr. Jeremiah, 
His bend in the road was much more worrisome than mine. As a matter of fact, my bend pales in comparison to his. Actually, compared to his, my bend was just a slight curve. Mm -hmm. When we find ourselves facing a bend in the road, no matter how devastating it might seem to be, we are never ever prepared for it. What could we possibly do to be poised to hear earth-shattering news or to go through trials reminiscent of the hellfire and brimstone that you heard about from an old-time Southern Gospel evangelist. I know that sounds extreme, but sometimes I felt that way when facing obstacles in my road. Learning about the death of a loved one pretty much tops that list for me. However, I've had to deal with marital issues, financial issues, work issues, and most recently, unexpected issues with our home. And I guess you really wouldn't need to know how God helps you deal with the bend in the road unless you've never faced these travesties. Mm, isn't that the truth? Like I mentioned earlier, David Jeremiah faced a devastating bend in his road. First though, for those of you who may not know who David Jeremiah is, here's a little black background information on him. He is an American conservative evangelical Christian author. He's founder of Turning Point Radio and Television Ministries and he's senior pastor of Shadow Mountain Community Church, which is a Southern Baptist mega church near San Diego, California. He has a master's degree from Dallas Theological Seminary and he's an honorary doctor of divinity from Cedarville University. Turning Point can be heard worldwide on more than 2,000 stations and his television, reaches, his television series reaches a total of 2.7 billion household yes. worldwide. That's a lot of people. He is, yes, he, and I'm sure that most people have turned on the TV, especially on a Sunday morning, and flipped through the channels. Oh, yeah. You found Dr. Oh, yeah. David Jeremiah. That's right. He's an, he's an award-winning author of numerous books on Christian theology and morality, and as I mentioned before, his book entitled A Bend in the Road is one of my resources for this commentary. Now, as I do my daily devotional, I'm constantly writing down little sentences that I want to remember mainly for possible topics for this lady's Bible study. Weeks ago, I came across a little quote that said this, a bend in the road is not the end of the road unless you fail to make the turn. Mm. To me, that was a very profound statement. The roads we travel are full of bends, and I'm sure you can identify with that. And for Christians, God is always waiting in the bend to make sure you make that turn. Mm -hmm. Now, David Jeremiah was called to fill the pulpit at Shadow Mountain Community Church in 1981 and soon thereafter founded the Turning Point Ministries. He was a true and faithful servant of God and worked very hard to do the work that he was called to do. After serving 13 years in the ministry at Shadow Mountain, on September 26, 1994, David Jeremiah came to a very sudden, sharp bend in his road. Mm -hmm. Going for what he thought was a routine physical examination turned into his worst nightmare. After going through a barrage of tests, which he, sure, he was sure he was passing with flying colors, his final exam was with his head physician. As the doctor was performing his final head-to-toe examination, Dr. Jeremiah was just laying there thinking to himself that this will all be over soon. They're going to hand me a bill and show me the door. But he was definitely not prepared for the bomb that was about to fall. As the doctor probed the left side of his abdomen, he said, Dr. Jeremiah, you have a mass here in your abdomen that causes me some concern. It feels to me as if your spleen is greatly enlarged. The doctor wanted to send him for a CAT scan that day. And after he had the scan later in the afternoon, the radiologist informed him that the results would be, um, would be available the following day. Well, at least his suspense wouldn't be prolonged. The next day, after seeing his wife off to visit her mother on the East Coast, Dr. Jeremiah headed to his office. He hadn't told his wife of the doctor's concern so as not to spoil the visit with her mom. And all day long he sat staring at the phone, 
knowing that an answer would be imminent. Finally, the phone rang, and he waited anxiously for the doctor's words that the scan was normal and everything was fine. But those were not the words he would hear. Instead, the doctor confirmed the presence of mass in his spleen, and he, along with three other doctors, had agreed that it was lymphoma, which is a cancer of the lymphatic system. Wow. After three grueling days, Dr. Jeremiah had a speaking engagement on the East Coast. So his, he and his wife uh, met up there, and they were in a hotel room in New Hampshire after the engagement. And it was there that he opened up and told his wife the devastating news of his diagnosis. After hours of praying and weeping, they buckled up for the ride of their life. He, Dr. Jeremiah underwent chemotherapy, which is, as you know, can ravish your body. The weakness and hair loss being just two of the horrendous side effects. One of the friends that Dr. Jeremiah turned to during this time reminded him of the methods that God uses to bring blessings into the lives of his servants. And one of the terms he used was disruptive moments. And he described disruptive moments as those anticipated events, most of which one would usually have chosen to avoid if possible. Isn't that the truth? And for the most part, they're usually associated with pain and inconvenience, mm -hmm or failure and humiliation. Of course, Dr. Jeremiah found all his comfort, his peace, and his understanding in the Holy Word of God, particularly in the book of Psalms. There is nearly enough time for me to tell you here every chapter and verse he focused on, but I can give you two passages of Scripture that he was repeatedly drawn to. The first is 2 Corinthians 12, 7 through 10, and next is Hebrews 12, 5 through 11. Please take the time to look those passages up and reflect on them. When you find yourself in a bend in the road, remember the Lord said, My grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And further it says, For when I am weak, then I am strong. Now this is found in the verses of 2 Corinthians 12. In Hebrews 12, God shows you the purpose, the pain, the provision, the product, and the perspective of the disruptive moments in your life. And here are five principles for you to remember. Disruptive moments are often divine appointments. And progress without pain is usually not possible. The promise of God is the provision of grace. Disruptive moments produce dynamic growth. And what we, rece what we receive from di disruptive moments depends upon how we respond to them. Now there are a lot of chapters in the book of Psalms that Dr. David Jeremiah used in, this, in his book. And each book was based on one of the chapters. I mean, each book of, the, of Psalms was based on mm -hmm. one of the chapters that mm -hmm. he was referencing at the time. Mm -hmm. So there's 10 of them. And they're, like I said, all from the book of Psalm. And here are the chapters that you probably would need, need to look back on and reflect on if this ever happened mm -hmm. to you. Psalm 71, Psalm 121, Psalm 13. 138, 63, 30, 142, 107, 46, and 16. And each one co corresponds with a chapter mm -hmm. in his book. By 1998, Dr. Jeremiah felt like he had survived the greatest trial and most paralyzing fear of his life. His faith had stood firm. He felt like he had a tight handle on just what was occurring spiritually in his life. He had used this serious illness to draw deeper into the knowledge of God. He was grateful for what God had done for him, and he had new, new insight into his ways. But then the nodule was discovered. Mm. 
It was at the base of his neck and it had to be surgically removed. And his pathology came back with the news of a recurrence of his lymphoma. Mm -hmm. However, the doctors informed him that he was a candidate for stem cell transplant. And um, this, this treatment had a, a far better outcome but the journey that he would have to travel would be treacherous. Oh, yes. The arduous trip was over, and Dr. Jeremiah had arrived a healthy man. And as far as I know, he is still the pastor of that church. He is. He's still there. And I know that this has been kind of lengthy, and it's been about someone else, but it was such a testimony that he had, that he gave, and it tells you so much about to do, what mm -hmm. to do when you, when you come to a mm -hmm. bend in your road. But no matter what, this, this commentary, the ending would have all been the same. Because when trouble comes, when you come to the bend in your road, sometimes God takes us through us, sometimes He helps us in it, and sometimes He keeps us from it. That's all right. But to know where to turn and who to turn to is the most important message I ask you to take from this. Now, for a memory verse challenge, um, I'm going to ask you to read Psalm 138, 7. And it says, Though I walk in the midst of trouble, you will revive me. Wow, that's a great verse, Kathy. One of the uh, psalms that um, Dr. Jeremiah had in his book is Psalms 121, and mm -hmm. I love that psalm, and it's one of my favorite, and I wanted to kind of share the first part, if you don't mind, Not with the bit. ladies. Please. I love this psalm because it starts out, it says, I lift up my eyes to the hills. Where does my help come from? My help comes from the Lord, the maker of heaven and earth. He will not let your foot slip. He who watches over you will not slumber. Indeed, he who watches over Israel will neither slumber nor sleep. The Lord watches over you. The Lord is your shade at your right hand. The sun will not harm you by day nor the moon by night. The Lord will keep you from all harm. He will watch over you, your life. The Lord will watch over your coming and your going, both now and forever. And I love the first verse because it says, I lift up my eyes to the hill. Mm -hmm. Where does my help come from? Absolutely. And, you, and you know, this was a very rough time in David's oh, life. He, yes. was, he was running for his life, basically. And mm -hmm. he was having to um, hold up in, a, in caves. Mm -hmm. And it was just a very hard time for him. And it corresponds so, mm -hmm. so clearly with us when we are... You know, when we faced these right. times in our life and we've come to bends in the road that we don't know that whether we're going to navigate through it That's or right. not. That's but right. There's always an answer and the answer is right here. That's right. This is the, the basic instructions before leaving earth. That's exactly. the Bible. Exactly. That's the Bible. And, and I'm, I, I'm sorry that I, had, I wrote so much about one person, but his, his testimony is, is just a wonderful it's testimony. something that you all need to know. I think because so many times you just don't know where to turn and if this book if anybody would just sit down and read this book and see what he had went through mm -hmm. and and how he navigated through it it's just amazing and I read it in just a very short time <laughs> well and you know I used to listen to him as I told you earlier that I listened to him on the way to work mm -hmm. in the mornings he he was on for 30 minutes and I would listen to him as I drove into work but I'm sure he human just like we are, and I'm sure when he started through this process, it was like, why me? And he did. He did. And he, he was afraid, too. Oh, surely. He was afraid. He was, and he didn't know, but he knew who held his future. Mm -hmm. and, and, and that's what's important, right. to know who holds the future. I, I made a few notes, as I always do, but I, I shared with you earlier about your poem from mm -hmm. Helen Steiner Rise I love this. about um, 
where it says, but God has a much wider vision and he knows that it's only a bend. The road will go on and get smoother. And after we've stopped for a rest, the path that lies hidden beyond us is often the path that is best. And I wrote a note to the side and I said, if we would only remember, it's just only a bend in the road and it's not the end of the road. Exactly. And that's exactly true. Every problem we face it's going to be a bend in the road, but you can't look at it, at it like an end because you know when you go around a sharp bend, you're eventually going to find a straight road. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. You know, and and so that was you know great and and it's just but it's you know it's really really hard when you're just driving along and then it hits you all of a sudden. I know you're, you're not expecting it. That's right. That's yeah. right. That's right. So, but. Then I liked what else you said about when you find yourself in the bend of the road, remember the Lord said, my grace is sufficient for you, for my strength is made perfect in weakness. And I, and, and, and it's true. Mm -hmm. And it says, for when I am weak, then I am strong. Mm -hmm. And that's where you draw your strength from, is God. Mm -hmm. You know, in your time of weakness, God is going to be your strength and he's going to carry you. That's exactly right. I like that poem about the footprints in the sand, mm -hmm. you know, that... You see one set of footprints, but God was carrying you. Yes. You know, so I, I just thought this was a powerful, powerful study today, Kathy. And, and I just, I admire Dr. Jeremiah. Right. and I do too. He just, um, he went through a terrible, terrible or, ordeal. And um, well, I, I had often, I mean, I had heard of Dr. Jeremiah. I knew that he was a very powerful mm -hmm. minister because I've had a lot of friends who listen to him mm -hmm. um, but I didn't know anything about him right and mm -hmm. when I saw the reference to this book mm -hmm. when I was doing all my research on the computer and I you know I immediately ordered the book it went mm -hmm. straight to my Kindle and I st immediately started reading mm -hmm. it it's like this man has been through so yes. much mm -hmm. and now you look at I look at him with a different view, you know. Oh yeah, oh but yeah. Knowing this about him, knowing what he's been through, and seeing him preach his sermons every mm -hmm. week, I mean, it, it's changed. Yes, and and view, don't you know him. his wife and family? They, oh my goodness, I'm sure they were affected too. I mean, of course they were, but I mean, you can't imagine what they were thinking, and they were having to be, you know, lifting him up and carrying him, and yet as a wife and a mother. You always have that silent concern, right? You know, and and you don't want your spouse to worry, but you were well. And for a long period of time, when he was doing the stem cell treatment, um, you're, they have to put your body into such immunosuppression. You couldn't be around anyone. Right. He was lying in the hospital bed day after day after day, seeing no one, looking at the ceiling. You know, mm -hmm. so that must have been extremely hard for him. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But boy, did he have some faith. He did. <laughs> he has. He, faith. It's a wonderful story. I'm yeah. going to load that book on my Kindle tonight and read it. Yeah. I read. I read some of his books. He has excellent books, right, right. and uh, they always have a very good message in them. I'm, I'm expecting to load a lot so, more on uh, my Kindle yeah, too. Yeah, he's great. It's a, well, thanks again, ladies. It's been a pleasure, and I hope that this has been a, a, a study, a story that you can re, uh, relate to at some point. Uh, not necessarily relate to but you know that if you you have something like this going on in your life you know where to go to find your answers That's right. so I'm just going to close this now and I thank you again for being with us Father God I just thank you so much for all of your blessings Lord we are so fortunate that we have the perfect resource when we find ourselves at a bend in the road no one like you can take these burdens and these worries and these trials and tribulations from us and, and take us through a curve and bring us back on the other side to a straight and smooth highway. Lord, it's, I'm so glad that um, I was drawn to this message. Mm -hmm. I was so glad that yes. you showed me um, the, the resources and to show me this book by Dr. Jeremiah because it has been such a help to me and I anticipate going back to it time and time again I just ask you Lord to continue to be with us as we try to do your work here that we are bringing a, a study a lesson 
to those who um, who may need just a bright spot in their lives mm -hmm. just on the, on a Wednesday you can t you can just see this and it's like I have a message there and this message means something to me and I'm glad it came along when it did thank you for the friendship, the love, and the care, and the compassion of each one of us in this family, Lord. There, are, there have been members of our church family who have suffered losses this week, and yes, I just pray, Lord, that they can find a navigation through the bend in their road right now. Lord, I ask forgiveness of all of our sins. I ask for forgiveness where we fail you so yes, often. Lord. Thank you, God, for loving us, for dying for us, and yes. for being our salvation. We just, we just love you and thank you, Lord. In your precious name I pray. Amen. Amen.